Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. We are continuing our journey towards the center of the galaxy to Sagittarius A star, the black hole at the center of the galaxy. As you can see, we are pretty much right on top of it. About 30 more jumps to go. Uh, ideally, that's probably only two or three more episodes because of the way we've been doing this. But let's go ahead and get off the ground, get on our way towards our destination there. And uh, we can go over the standard stuff that we talk about as we go into these videos. So uh, we're making our way over there mostly because we are trying to make our, uh, or trying to level up our exobiology. So we're trying to find planets that we can land on that have uh, cool things to scan so we can sell that information once we reach uh, another station. So that's the primary thing that we're trying to get done. And then obviously just visiting cool places along the way is a side bonus. So that's what we're planning on doing right now. We'll get off this planet, get lined up with uh, the jump, the, uh, the jumping to the next system point, and then uh, continue trying to find what it is that we're looking for. Uh, before we get too far into this episode, though, be sure to like the video if you find it fun and interesting. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to continue following this journey all the way to its conclusion. Um, as of right now, we will be going all the way out to Beagle Point. So for those of you who have been following the series, uh, it has grabbed enough attention that I, I will be continuing it. So we'll get to the black hole out there, check it out, sell our data, and then continue on towards Beagle Point. And then if the series continues to keep, you know, bringing in the views that it's been bringing, uh, after that we can decide where we're going to go from there. We don't necessarily have to go straight back to the bubble. We can find other places to visit. So uh, the sequence of events that we do when we hop in here is we usually pop the uh, discovery scanner, check the map to see if anybody has scanned any of this stuff already, which looks like they got a couple of them, but nothing interesting. Then we'll pop down into the full spectrum system scanner, scanner looking for Earth-like worlds, ammonia worlds, and gas uh, and water worlds. Uh, if we don't find any of those, then we have to make a decision. Uh, if it's 15-ish or less planets or if bodies in the system, we'll generally go ahead and do a full scan to see if there are any biological signatures. Otherwise, uh, I generally, that's generally my limit, 15-ish, 15, 15 right around that area. If there's more than that, especially significantly more than that, I'll generally just leave the planet or leave the, leave the star system, move on to the next one because it takes a long time to scan these <laughs> and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time scanning a single system when we could be moving on and advancing our journey. So let's hop in here. It's kind of cool to be getting close to our destination and I'm really glad that you know there's somewhere to go after this because you guys have been showing a lot of interest in the videos and I appreciate that. All right, so there's a biological source here. You can see it up there in the top right where it says features, but I really want to find uh, a planet that has two or more because if it's just one biological feature like you see there, um, it's only going to be bacteria. And that's not, I, I, for me, it's not really worth my time to go do that. So we're looking for at least two because those will be easy to see from the, those will be easy to see from, uh, from the air. A lot of times the bacterial sources will be a very similar color to the ground and they become very difficult to see and there's no trick there's no real tips or tricks or anything like that to help you spot them at least with most of the other biological sources you can pop into night vision mode and the little green uh, overlay will kind of highlight things and make them easier to spot sometimes so generally i want at least two biological sources it's really great when you can find three or four or even more than that but that doesn't seem to happen very much. And it's funny because um, when you get into a system, a lot of times it'll either have no biology at all or you'll have like five or six planets sometimes that have a bunch of biology on it. So it seems like it gets kind of concentrated in there. Let's check the map and the system scanner. So no valuable planets, but like I said, it's kind of a fudge area. 17 is like, eh, it's close enough to 15 that I'm willing to kind of expend a little bit of time on it. So let's go ahead and um, run through these planets here while I try to come up with something to talk about. Because it seems like 
<coughs> excuse me, there's another another single biology planet, not really what I'm looking for. Because it seems like, for the most part, a lot of you come to these videos uh, for just the random conversation. I'm not really sure. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Sometimes I can come up with things to talk about. Other times, I really struggle. Okay, so no features there. No features there. Any, any more? Doesn't look like it. So if you're, uh, if you want this little scant, this little thing that's moving left and right across the screen, that th this is the filter that allows you to kind of find what specific things are in an area. So this is going to be asteroid belts, and then we just keep going around, following the orbit lines here until we find all of the planets and moons and stuff. So, gas giant. And then this guy will have several things around him. Too geological. Not really what we're looking for, though. You'd be surprised how many of these icy bodies have life on them. All right. So we just had that one planet that had the biological on it. If we continue to... If we get towards the end of the episode and... I mean, even then, I don't know. If we get towards the end of the episode and all we can find is a single biology planet, we may go ahead and land just so we can get some kind of biological scanning out of it. But then again, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> it just depends on how I feel at the time, because going uh, scanning, going to scan, like I said, finding the bacterial samples a lot of times is just a lot more difficult than finding some of the other stuff depending on the contrast between the actual biological sig the bacteria that you're trying to find and the ground that it's sitting on. So so here's a here's an example of a system that we're just going to we'll pop into the full spectrum scanner just to see if there are any of the three signatures that we're looking for, but other than that, no. I'm not trying to waste a bunch of time doing 25 planets. We've already we've already expended way too much time. So that says it's an Earth. That says it might be an Earth-like world. Uh, it's hard. Nah, it's, I'm pretty sure that's a rocky ice world. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Unfortunately, because. Rocky ice worlds have a lot of ice on them. Yeah, that's all that was. All right, moving on. Because rocky ice worlds have a lot of ice on them, that means it has a lot of water on them, and it can it's very close to the Earth-like worlds, so sometimes it's hard to tell. All right. Really hoping we're going to be able to find some interesting biology. I don't. I feel like we haven't found anything cool in a while. We've been coming up, we've been coming up short on the biology side of things. I have to say though, it's nice when we find those ammonia worlds. Those I think, I think the ammonia worlds are worth the most. So when we can find those, that's pretty nice. I have no idea, as far as the bio the uh, the bi exobiology scans, what anything is worth. Uh, don't have a table. Never really looked it up. Haven't really thought about it because I'm mostly concerned. Well. <laughs> It's not like you can be super picky and choosy, but I'm mostly concerned with just ranking up my character, uh, not so much the money aspect of it. I have plenty of money. Well, you know, and that does bring up a point. Uh, some of you have said that I should invest in a ship car in a uh, in a, uh, a carrier, and uh, while I think that that would be super cool to do, they cost five billion credits. I'm not that rich. I know I say money is not an issue for me. But I'm not that rich where I can just drop five billion on a on a carrier, <laughs> and I'm I'm not willing to grind. I'm not willing to grind to the point where I'm able to do that either. So, that's that's a lot of high metal content world. Uh, that's a lot of time spent having to do that. I'm, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm okay. And just and also, it's just the fact that for exploration purposes, um, you know. If I was if I was doing more of a trying to get as many systems as I could kind of thing, where I just hop, I, I jump 500 light years away and then I, I jump, and then I take one of my smaller ships to just kind of hop around this nearby systems, you know that would make sense. But 
I like to do journey based exploration where I have a destination in mind and then, you know, we just kind of grab things along the way. And it's actually faster to have a well fitted exploration. Ooh, we're definitely not stopping here. Uh, it's actually faster to have a well equipped, a well engineered exploration ship because um, I can do, you know, 60 plus light years at a time. Ooh, what do we got here? So, okay, there's a water world here. Excellent. Uh, I gotta find it though. Where is it? I hate it when it's like this. What's this over here? So another gas giant. Um, behind the star? I hate it when it gets like this. Can you can you just show up for me, please? Uh, and then it doesn't help that when you do all different kinds of directions, you see how it's, see how it's all turning and being ridiculous like this. So you, you lose your sense of orientation because they didn't fix they didn't fix this to a specific direction. Okay, you know if I can't if I can't even find it here. Well, you know what? Well, no, it's not going to show. It's, I was going to say I could probably just hop over to here, but it's not going to show up until I scan anything. So. As much as I want to go find this, I'm not going to spend 20 minutes trying to filter through all of this stuff here. So, unfortunately, we're just going to leave it. I'm not. I've already spent way too much time trying to find it in the trying to find it in there. I'm not. I'm not drilling down into each layer of those planets to try to find one single thing. The water worlds are expensive, and they're not expensive enough that I'm worried about it. <laughs> You know, if it was like a hundred million dollar scan, okay, well that might be worth it, but none of them are in anywhere close to that kind of scan. I think some of them are worth like a million credits, and that's, I think it, the, the highest scans are right around up in that area, but yeah. But as I was saying, as much as I'd love to have a fleet carrier, it's just, they're really expensive to buy, they're really expensive to maintain, and, you know, ugh. If, I, if it was just like a, a, a one-time buy kind of thing, I might do the grind for it. But the fact that you're required to continue to pay every week, it's just, it's too much. It's way too much for, for what I'm willing to do. The amount of grinding I would have to do to keep making that kind of money to keep the up, to do the weekly upkeep, especially when we're trying to, you know, focus on exploration. I mean, I guess, well, I mean, I guess. I was, I, it just popped in my head. I mean, if I had, if I had all of the services on my carrier to sell the information as we were grabbing this stuff, I mean, I guess that would probably pay for it, depending on how lucky we got. I don't know. The big problem would be, though, grinding out that 5 billion credits plus to be able to buy the dang thing in the first place. But it would be nice to have... Uh, you know, my own my own roaming station where I can keep all of my ships and always have all of my ships with me to do whatever I wanted, however I wanted to do it. That would be pretty nice. How many planets were in this one? I don't even remember. Twenty. Oh yeah, we're not stopping here. <laughs> I guess my big question for that then would be, what are the outfitting options? Because I know you can put a ship hanger on your. Um, I know you can put a ship hanger on your thing. And then you can outfit your ship with that, but I mean, I don't know. Is everything available on that, or do, or, or is it like a limited selection of things? You know what I mean. And then, are are all of the modules and stuff that I have just kind of in storage, trans available from that, or I don't know. I can see how the the carrier would be an excellent exploration platform, especially since I don't really have too much interest in being in the bubble. I'm not super into combat. That's not I mean I can I can do it. It's it's okay. But for the most part I like just Oh, is it just the one thing here? For the most part I just uh I just like doing the exploration part and the uh I didn't mind the the shipping, the the space trucking part so much, and mining's pretty fun, and that's absolutely something we could do out in the black. Um, the only problem with that though is would I be able to sell my 
would I be able to sell my ore? Would I be able to sell the ore that I mined? Is there unlimited storage on the fleet carrier so that when we eventually get somewhere where we could sell our stuff? Or is that, I don't know, I don't know how that works. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe after, maybe, maybe that, maybe that could be kind of our next goal. If you guys are interested in continuing to follow the series, maybe after we do all of this exploration, we'll see how much money we have and see how much more we would have to grind once we're done with this. And then, uh, you know, if we're if we're reasonably close, what's this? If we're reasonably close to getting to that, then maybe we can shift our tactics and then do like a a deep space exploration series where we're not really worried about ever coming back to the bubble we're just trying to grab stuff. all right seriously man all right so the, whatever this is must be way out over here way out off in the distance somewhere so it's probably far away since it's not in the little how far is that uh yeah that's way you see it over there on the left side where it says distance 162960 that's way too far away I would never, ever go off and go that far in uh, in Super Cruise mode. That's not happening. <laughs> so we're moving, on. we're moving on. We're down to 21 jumps, though. So that 21 jumps. Oh, my God. 21 Jump Street. Never watched that show, but it was very, very popular. I think it was before my time. I think that was an 80s show. I was, I was born in the 80s, but wasn't old. I'm not old enough to remember it. See if we can find something interesting here. I'm ready to I'm ready to find something to go scan. It'd be really nice if we could I, I, I'm I'm really oh that's weird. What's that? That looks cool. Fuel scooping complete. I like these dark planets like that. I think they look cool. Alright. I didn't check. I didn't see how many bodies there were here. What does it say? Three. Well, <laughs> not gonna be. Not gonna be very. Uh... System scan complete. Fortunately, there was nothing here. So yeah, I mean that could be a super long-term goal. You know, if we go all the way out to Beagle Point and then maybe decide to come back to the bubble. Um. And then by the time we get back, we have, an, we have you know, maybe maybe we're a third of the way there or half of the way. I can't imagine. Oh, I didn't press the button. I can't imagine that we're going to be getting billions of credits out of all of this stuff. We, we might get, what, 500 million once we sell our stuff. I don't know. We'll have a better. I know I keep saying I don't know. And it's because I don't know. I don't, I don't know how much all of this stuff is going to sell for. I guess when we get to... Um, when we get to Sagittarius A Star and this and the, uh, the little the little station that they put up nearby, we'll sell our stuff. We'll gauge how much money we made, and if it seems like we're gonna make a crazy amount of money on our way out and back, then uh, you know maybe that'll be the plan. Maybe we'll go. Maybe maybe we'll continue out to Beagle Point. I mean, obviously that's gonna depend on how much money we make. If we've already made a crazy amount of money here, we can make some decisions. But I I know I'm rambling. I I have a I have five or six different paths in my head right now, and I'm, I'm not able to really focus on any of them. <laughs> I don't necessarily have a problem with going after the fleet carrier, especially if we can come up with a way to keep it funded as we're doing our journey here. Um, as long as you guys are continuing to watch the channel, I will be doing the daily uploads like I've been doing. So if we're able to make decent amounts of money every week to keep to make sure that we're having the upkeep the way we want it then you know I'm fine with that the problem is is that like today we haven't really scanned anything so we're not really making any money today and I would want the fleet carrier to be as outfitted as I can reasonably make it because I want to have access to um, I want to have access to the uh, as, ma as many of the services as I can get for my ship because I want to have access to outfitting. I want to have access to the genomics thing so I can sell our, our biological data. I want to have access to the astronomics, uh, the, 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 the planet scanning shop so I can sell my stuff there and 
you know, <clears throat> I'm sure that I, I wouldn't really care too much about the bar, I don't think, because we're going to be in, we would be in places where we're not going to have a lot of people flying through, so I don't imagine that's going to help very much, but I don't know. You guys let me know. what for, for a deep space exploration carrier, what would make the most sense as far as what what shop modules we would put on there. I definitely want to make sure I have as much access to outfitting as I can get so that I can always reconfigure my ships however I want. And then, obviously, I want to make sure we have the resources to sell the exploration data that we're gathering, so we would definitely need to have those. <clears throat> but outside of that, I don't know. And then, obviously, we'd have to stop off every once in a while to gather up the tritium that we need for all of the jumps that we're doing, so... I have an orca that I have set up for mining. So if we can find uh, that, is, I, I know that's a weird. I know that's a weird. I know that's a weird choice for a mining vessel, but I chose it because it had. <clears throat> I could equip it with a relatively big cargo hold setup, and it's very maneuverable for a large ship. So compared to say the class, the Type Nine Heavy or whatever, it it, it nimbly moves around those asteroids like a boss. So while I understand it was intended to be a, a passenger ship, the maneuverability of that, the small end of the large spectrum ship, that you know, it, it has a big enough cargo hold to make it useful, and the maneuverability of it is just insane as far as what I could tell from some of the other stuff that's out there. So I found it to be the ideal mining vessel. I highly recommend you try it out. So, and it's just a nice cockpit from which to from which to dig from. So, we really need to get down on the ground at this point because we've basically run out of time. So let's uh, let's see if we can find somewhere to land. All right, so we at least have something that has geologicals on it, which means it should be a landable planet. Let's see if we can find any biology before we before we uh, commit to landing on any of this. Hmm. All right, well, at the very least, we have a place to go land at this... What was that? Oh, but no, it's not in the... I don't know why I'm getting all excited. Some of them look like they would be water worlds or something like that, but you have to pay attention to that spectral filter there, because if it's not if it's not over here, it's not. It's just... It's just all, all, everything to the left of your cursor when you uh, start up the full spectrum system scanner is basically not worth very much. All right, so let's go ahead and get this closest moon locked in and we will head towards it and get landed. So I like to get lined up with it first and then I'll pop it into full throttle mode. That way we can get there as quick as we can, and then once we get down to seven seconds, that's kind of like the magic number when it comes to approaching a body or a, or a, or a uh, station or anything like that. Um, in general, depending on the ship that you have, you can cheat a little bit by over, over throttling down to five seconds if you're careful with it. And then if you can get it right there at five seconds, that's usually kind of like the sweet spot to do the, the, quick, the quick drop out of the quick dropout. So your if you have the super cruise assist, um, it will take you all the way up. And even if you're going really, really fast by the time you get it, as long as you're not going too fast, you can basically zip all the way up to your target and it will automatically drop you out real fast. And you'll be right on top of the thing that you were trying to thing that you were trying to go to. It does not work on planets, don't try it on planets. But if it's a station or something like that, you can generally you know, if you're careful about it, you can you can nudge it down to five seconds, and then it will pop you into the system as fast. That's about as fast as you're going to get it. So that's kind of the that's kind of the thing there. So yeah, I don't know. I love the idea of a fleet carrier, but I would need a serious a serious strategy for how we would make that work. The idea of having all of my ships with me all the time, and I can just pop into whatever I want to pop into. Especially having access to the small, having like a small ship that I can just, because I like, uh, I like the Imperial Courier. I really like that ship. And being, if I was able to use that because it's a small ship to just zip around to, you know, nearby star systems and do exploration there, that would be a stylish way to go about doing it. <laughs> 
That would be a very stylish way to go about doing it. So, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. What do you think about what do you think about doing a carrier? Do you think that there's a feasible way to make it happen that's not going to require insane amounts of grinding all the time outside of the videos that we've been doing now? And, uh, you know, I mean, I, get, I don't necessarily have too much of a problem with doing a little bit of, like, mining and stuff off camera, if that's what it's going to take to keep it up. But I don't want to have to be spending hours and hours and hours doing, doing you know, carrier maintenance. That's going to be, ugh, that's too much. I have too many other things to do to spend uh, all, my, whole, my whole life doing that. <laughs> so carriers, I think, were originally intended to be kind of a group effort kind of thing. It's usually how they do stuff like that. And I'm going to try to land on the Terminator over here. Um, so, you know, while it's feasible for a single person to do that, it's not really how it was intended to work. And they went out of their way to make it very, require a lot of resources to do it. So I'm pretty sure that their intention was, you're supposed to kind of team up with other people to get a fleet carrier. And I know people still, I know people still go off and get them on their own because it's relatively easy to make money in this game. But... You have to be super dedicated to grinding if you're going to do that. And I don't know. I, I really don't want to. I don't want to grind. I'm, I'm kind of past the, the phase of my life where I'm willing to do in, insane amounts of grinding. It's just that's a lot. All right. Let's get landed down over here. And uh, we can stop talking about fleet carriers for, for, for the time being. Unless you guys really make, it a, really make it a point to give me some cool ideas on how we can make that work. our throttles completely off so I don't have any issues we'll land kind of right here get our landing gear down now so that way we don't overspeed because once you have your landing gear down it's usually gravy okay here we go the star Oh, is that it right there? That might be it right there. All right. Oops. Now we just got to find a spot to land. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, anyways, hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you did and sends the video out to more viewers. The more people we can get along for this ride as possible, the better, uh, the more fun we're going to have because we can all discuss it and have input and all that kind of stuff. And everybody can kind of feel like they're along for the ride and actually doing something. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your video feed and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do also get early access to all of my videos in addition to several other benefits depending on the tier at which you choose to support. So be sure to click that join button and see if any of those options are right for you. Again, thank you very much for your time. I hope you guys had lots of fun and I'll see you for the next one.